Hello everybody. Here is your crafty urban farmer coming to finish up on uh, the video I did with my wheatgrass soak. So this is what I started with. It's one and a half cups of dry seed and this is what one and a half cups of dry seed looks like once it has soaked for two days. It is now December 7th and as you can see why I label them this is December 5th so two days ago I planted I, I started soaking this I soaked it for just under 12 hours then over the next two days I rinsed it twice a day and this is where I'm at. So there is definitely, oops, sorry about that. There is definitely a lot of swelling of the seed that goes on. And we're going to plant four trays of wheatgrass this morning, but the video is only going to show two. I'm going to do a little bit of an experiment. I'm going to use peat moss media that I have sifted to get all the big chunks out. So it's a very fine peat moss. Um, what I do with the dirt is I put it into the tray. As you can see, my tray is full of dirt. And then I take my, my top that I put on to keep the seed down and I push down on the dirt like so. I don't have a separate tamper because I find that I cut these to fit inside my trays and it works as a tamper and other things. So I really like this system. Then I take that off and the dirt's all nice and flat. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle and I'm going to spray the dirt to get the surface of the dirt wet. Um, some people use a watering hose. My setup, I do not have a watering hose in my setup. So I use this spray bottle and as you can see this spray bottle. And I also use a soak method for my larger plants where I put them in a tray of water and I water them from the bottom. I will show you another watering technique another day where I water from the bottom and the system that I have put together. It's not pretty or fancy, but you know, it works for me and it didn't cost me $600. So that's why I like it. So the dirt is now wet. It doesn't have to be wet all the way through. I am using a um, kelp solution. I like to start my plants off with a kelp solution, as you can see. I'm using the backwards thing on the phone today so I can see what I'm doing, because Rob's not here to help me. And that's that. So as you can see, I have my cheesecloth on top. I have rinsed this already this morning. So I'm going to go ahead and dump it onto the tray. <clears throat> if I can get the lid off. <laughs> my weak hands. Maybe I'll try the other one. I'll just use this one. This one is the elastic method. So I don't have to, and the, and the wheatgrass does stick in there. So you kind of have to tamp it down and be careful. And then you take it off and then you have your wheatgrass. This is quite far along for two days. It's a nice warm atmosphere in here. And when I rinse, I use warm tap water to rinse. So you just pour that onto your tray. Like so. I like to use a container that I can have my, get my hand into because I don't like to waste any seed. So I take my hand and I stick it in there. Be careful that your hand does fit properly because you wouldn't want it to get stuck. And you take your seed that has soaked for two days or soaked and rinsed. You've done the soaking process as I call it. So now you have nothing in there. You have your label on your jar that's going to go onto your tray. 
And then you take the seed and you spread it out. And you know, wheatgrass likes to pile on top of each other. Um, I am using a two inch germination tray. I do have one inch and I am going to do an experiment where I put the wheatgrass in a one inch tray and a two inch tray today and I'm going to see what happens. I will give you the outcome of that. I'm also going to use two trays with cocoa mat. So that's pretty much it. Uh, in the past I have put a layer of dirt on top, not a thick layer, just enough to cover it because I find that it works its way down between the seeds and everything has something to root in. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I do not do this with all my seeds. I did try doing it with my smaller seeds. Doesn't work as well. Bigger seeds, peas, um, and the wheatgrass, having a thin layer of dirt on top that washes down because they are so thick helps the process. It, it doesn't hurt anything and it doesn't get in the way. I found that the smaller seeds, it was not a good idea to use this method with the smaller seeds like radish and broccoli and um, all the smaller kinds of seeds because uh, it just made a mess of everything. With the wheatgrass and the peas, it doesn't do that and it helps prevent mold. I can hear Comet, my Jenny Conyer parrot in my kitchen because he can hear me so he's doing his parrot screaming thing at me so like I said it's just a really thin layer of dirt on the top and once that's watered in it actually washes down in amongst the seeds so everything has some dirt to send its little root tendrils out and here we go, I'm going to water this in. I need to pump up my water, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to invest in, I think, an electric water pump because uh, I was at the store on the, uh, yesterday actually and it's quite expensive, but you don't have to pump all the time. It's battery operated. Don't know how long the batteries last. I'll have to do a video of that. So you just wash the dirt down in amongst the seeds. Watering your seeds in is important if you don't use the dirt as much as it is with the dirt. You have to water your seeds down. Um, again, you do not have to use the dirt method. A lot of people don't. Most people don't. It's something that I like to do with my bigger seeds. So you just do this until it's very, very saturated and wet. When germinating and getting your germination trays ready, you do have to get them very, very, very wet. Because you put a top on them for another two or three days, sometimes longer, depending on what you're doing. Um, I've been experimenting with some carrots and cilantro and basil. And those ones are a longer germination stage. Um, I do not soak those seeds. They're very, very tiny. And basil, the stuff that I have, the kitchen blend basil that I have, um, it's quite an interesting looking seed. The next time I do some, I will do a video for you. When you get them wet, they look like little eggs. So that's the dirt method. When I use cocoa core mat, I do not put the dirt on top, as you're going to see. So I will give you a quick show of what that looks like. There is, oops, that's the other tray. Come back this way. That's what it looks like. As you can see, you can still see the seeds throughout the tray. So yeah, it's, it's not about covering them completely. It's just about covering them a little bit so that all of the seeds have a chance to root properly and like I said I just find it works better that off to the side take my cover I'm gonna put that on top get back to that 
Now this is the other method. As you can see, this is cocoa core. I've soaked the cocoa core. What I did was I just took a solid tray, put the cocoa core in it with, with warm water for 15 minutes. Um, these are bamboo reeds. Um, bamboo, you can buy at any uh, local um, nursery store. We have a supplier that we got ours from. You cut it to size to fit into your tray. And then you take your your bamboo and you put it across the bottom. I have two different sizes. I cut ones that fit really good that go and then the other two that were the leftover ones I put and I'll just show you the bottom so you can see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. And then I take my cocoa core mat and I just place it over the reeds. Now what that does when you put the bamboo underneath your cocoa core is it gives the water a place to go and it gives your roots a place because you need when you're doing a hydroponic type system and that's what this is it's not completely hydroponic but cocoa core is used in hydroponics it's it's quite thin so as you can see it's only like probably maybe a quarter of an inch thick the roots need a place for airflow and that's why you put the bamboo underneath your cocoa core so then your roots aren't always just sitting in water either so then you take I'm not going to fight with the lid on that. I'll do that after. I wonder if I can get this one off. That's a problem with putting the lids on. My hands are weak. So I'm going to take the other one that had the elastic. And I did two with elastic and two with lids. I like my elastics better. Because I have girl hands. If Rob was here, he'd just take them off. But he's not here. And you do the same thing. You take the, the seed that you've germinated and you plop it out onto the core mat. This was one and a half cups, just like the other one. And I will be doing two trays like this. And you put it out like that. This is a two and a half inch tray. I found the one inch trays don't work as well with the core mat, the cocoa core mat, because um, it's not deep enough. And, the, and everything sits too high in it. So then you do that again, where you take your seeds and as you can see, you just spread them out. And you fall out, you just take and spread them out evenly. Like so. Fill all your holes and spaces. And the problem that I have had in the past when I do it this way, and I don't cover my seeds, is um, I get rot or mold starting. And that comes from seeds that either can't root properly or haven't germinated. But this soaking method where you do it for two to three days, I find two days is always fine for me. The soaking method, um, all of the seeds germinate. At least they do with the mum seeds that I use. And that's all. And then I will take my spray bottle and I will water those in as well. Um, keep getting me in the picture here and I really didn't want to be in the picture today because my hair is a mess. It's a bad hair day. Um, I have naturally curly hair and unfortunately if I don't straighten it, it looks like I stuck my finger in a light socket. I'm sure people who have naturally curly hair can relate to that. Um, so yeah, you just, even though I'm not putting dirt over top of these this wheatgrass, I still water the seeds down. They need to stay wet so that they still, as, the, as this is still part of the germination stage because the seeds still have to root into the media that you're using for them to root into. So you water those in really good. Another thing with the cocoa core mat you may have to uh, take your cover off a little bit and water during the rooting stage because uh, the core mat does not hold the water quite the same as dirt does. You can get a cocoa core dirt media. Um, it does hold the moisture. 
um, but it doesn't overwater. We were looking into that today too, but again, we do this for resale, so we have to try to keep our costs down. So there's my ceiling again. That's what it looks like. It's very, um, it's very dense. And I will do a video in about 10 days. Well, probably before 10 days, I'll let you see what's going on with them. But in 10 days, roughly, is when they're ready to harvest. Anywhere from eight to 10 days. And some people I've heard leave them 12 days. I find if I leave them much more than 10, that I'm getting into areas that I don't want to get into. So that's it for today. I'm going to go ahead and plant my other two trays. One's going to be on cocoa core mat and the other's going to be in a one inch tray with the peat moss media. Thanks and I will give you an update in a few days. Bye bye.